Hi, welcome to Self Generated. My name is Steve. I'm the host and creator of this series, and we're exploring the idea of perception, how you fundamentally experience things, uh, especially how you hear things, how that actually works. And that it's not about being academic, it's not about like being able to pass a test as to how you actually hear. It's about following a few very common sense, logical ways to explore your actual perceptions and realize that maybe how you think they work is slightly different than how they actually work and that there's something very important in that. And that if you believe that you hear everything and that it's reality, that, that there's a little bit of an issue. It's not that it's not reality. So when I say something is not 100% reality, no need to jump to 100% it's not reality. That's black and white thinking. It doesn't even make sense. Just because it's not 100% it doesn't mean that it's not the exact op or doesn't mean that it's the exact opposite. What I do mean is that what if it's 80%? What if it's 70%? What if it's 20%? What if it's just not 100% reality? Does that give you a moment of pause? Does that give you a moment of, well, what is that? Oh, well, what it, I'm trying to explore in the totality of this series is just that active inference, which I believe is that experience. You believe there's something to be true. And when some information, some sensory information comes and challenges that idea, you feel the error signal. You feel challenged. And that no matter if I'm wrong or right, the idea of being able to explore another idea that might be conflicting with what you believe to be true is fundamental to the human experience. And that's a fundamental part of what self-generated does, is trying to inform and empower people to explore that. And that me hearing, you hearing, you hearing me right now is not a 100% reflection of reality. First and foremost, there is a multitude of noises going on. If you were especially playing me over speakers versus just head buds, headphones, there's noise outside. There's noise from your own heartbeat. There's noise from you moving around and rustling that you don't notice until it is brought to your attention, your salience. And for whatever reason, that's what you focus on. If you're in a room and it can be relatively quiet, somebody's tapping their pencil lightly, it's not really that noticeable. But if you become hyper fixated on it, you can't help but experience just the tapping of that pencil the crying of the baby on the plane, the whatever it is, it's not just your ears funneling the sound waves to whatever it is that's you sitting in your skull, taking it all in. There's something far deeper to that. The fact that when I talk, that when you hear me, you experience words, you experience that I'm saying something, there's meaning to the sounds. They're not just sounds. If I were to play a block, and I'll just cut for a second, la Repubblica Democratica di Vietnam e a me assolutamente l'assurre in sala di France l'assurre la défense e l'écrasé n'importe quel agressore imperialista and now that I'm back that block of sound was in fact a foreign language but it sounds to somebody who doesn't know what it is just like sounds you can't you can't differentiate it there's other sounds that will run across where you can't tell what it is. It sounds like a crying child. It turns out it's a goat. There's a, I'm sure there's a Reddit post. I think I'll find it. And I'll put it in here. That there's sounds that we think, oh, it's this thing. And it turns out it's something else. And quite often that surprising realization that we experienced when we found out that it was not this thing, but in fact something else is part of active inference. That's your model being updated. That's the surprise. That's the experience you have from what you expect versus what you experience or what you're taking in. And that the idea is that it's okay, whatever sound is and whatever our experience of audio is, that experience that you have can't be 100% reality. But if we feel it needs to be, that that is where the rub lies. And first barrier to, uh, you know, it actually being reality 100% as is, other than describing that you're, you know, you, a bunch of sound is happening at once and you're only really experiencing the thing that you're focusing on, is that if sound were 100% reality, it would capture all of the frequencies, which we don't. You know, that's why your dog can howl and use a dog whistle. You and I can't hear it. It's outside of the spectrum of our hearing, but it's not outside of the spectrum of reality or existence. Because our hearing, as all perceptions, are not meant to record reality 100% as is. It's to create an interpretation that we can function within. And so that when it comes to hearing things like me, the sound comes in through the air, through the airwaves, whether it's from my voice or a speaker is irrelevant. It goes into your ear through a handful of tiny uh, little bones and into the cochlea, which is about the size of a pea. There's about 10,000 hairs on this little thing. And as it moves, 
those uh, movements of the hairs are the signals at your bones, that that's what the brain receives, that then is turned into what you experience. So already right there, that's not a direct reflection of reality. It's process. Things are happening. The information is being bro broken down. It's not just the totality of the fire hose of all of the information. And that then you experience based off of not just the information coming in, but what's important to you, what you can understand, how you actually experience it. Again, because I'm speaking the language you understand, you experience the sound coming out of my mouth as words, as meaning, as sayings, and that there's layers to that. And the reason you experience it that way is because it's not just you or a sense that is you passively receiving it and processing it. It is, in fact, generating it from the signal. And that's why these things have meaning. That's why you can experience meaning in hearing somebody's voice that is somebody you remember, that all of a sudden it can bring an emotional response. It's not just that it's triggering memories or some mechanical idea. It's that it's, uh, it's familiar. You remember the pattern of the voice. When you're predicting, like when we're talking about predictive processing and, and, and prediction in the brain, right? People go, what are you talking about? Like seeing the future. It's about predicting the now. It's predicting what these signals mean, how they relate to what you know. And that's exactly how we actually work versus that there's some version of you taking in all of these things that are auditory or that are visual or that are any sensory information and somehow judging based off of them. And that there is something called the McGurk effect, where in somebody's mouth will move in one way when they're, and if they're saying a different letter, you'll experience the letter they're saying from the mouth movement versus the audio, okay? And that the idea is, is because we, even when you're hearing, it's not just the audio cue coming in. It is in fact the idea that it's the amalgam of everything. That's how it's generated. That your vision has an effect on how you hear, that makes no sense. How could that work? Well, that's because it's not just a speaker to your soul. It is put into your brain, which is processed into the totality of experience. And that is why you experience it that way. And that the McGurk effect, when somebody is saying D, 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 and their lips are actually moving to B, but you experience them saying B, is because the totality of your experience of hearing is generate from the signals. It's an interpretation of reality. So it's not that 4K image. It's not that real high definition video. It's much more of a painting or an animation. And that that, the, but the problem with that idea is, is not anything that other than there's plenty of technical truth to that. It even kind of makes sense when you realize, well, it's already broken down into signals. It's not a hundred percent direct reflection of reality. It just, it can't be, but that why would we feel that we need it to be? Because most of society and how things work assume that your reflections of reality, your experiences, you can take for 100% certainty that they're reality. And all I'm saying is that you, you, you can't take it for 100. You can't take it for 100%. And that there's just no way you can. You can't hear a lot of the things. You're, you're hearing degrades. Uh, the, the, that's just one aspect of all of your senses. And that you're only paying attention to one thing at a time. That there's, there's limitations to how you actually experience that, how you can hear. And your visual acuity is key to your hearing. That's why, I mean, I, I don't know about you, but I use subtitles on a lot of the things that uh, I watch. And uh, I'm, my watching of people's mouth movements is key. And if you've ever seen those lip sync or those things where the, the videos where they make fun of what people are actually saying and they kind of put in their own script over the actual mouth movements and it looks like it can match. And that that's humorous, that works because that experience that it matches up, that it, it, it's, it is because your experience of hearing things is not just your ears, but the totality of the generated experience based off of your prior experience. And that that's a totally different way of looking at it. And that we're, we're looking at it in all the different senses. We look at it in vision and in taste and touch and, or, and, uh, and smell, but that Fundamentally, when you realize it, that a lot of these things, these experiences you have are, again, not just the touch being projected, the vision being projected, the hearing being projected, the taste being projected. It's, the, it's this generation of all this information coming in 
and most important and tied to it is what you expect, what you've experienced, what you understand, where you're at. There's a lot more variability to that than we think. And that that's important. Music. is that I'm not a music guy. I've never been a big music guy, which strikes some people as odd. But that uh, I, it just never was a thing that uh, was something that filled a lot of my, my free time and my entertainment. But that I understand now that the patterns that are in music and the pattern recognition of music alone has a power to it. And that there, there are tons of aspects of, of how we experience the world that uh, draw us in naturally and innately that we don't really understand. And it's mainly due to the fact that we don't look at it through this lens of if we're creatures of active inference and body cognition and the extended mind, how would this work? And that the understanding of active inference and predictive processing in language and speech and in understanding is clear because that's how ChatGPT works in a way. LLMs and machine learning uses these principles, Bayesian inference. And that in some way, shape, or form, it does appear that our, our own perceptions use this Bayesian inference, this approximation, this active inference process to generate our perceptions. And at least in some way, shape, or form, uh, even if you don't want to get into that narrative, it's more about that you can't take your perceptions, your experiences, hearing, as 100% reflections of reality because they're generated. They're generated from your sensory signals. They're not 100% reflections of your sensory signals. Does that make sense? And that when we hear things, when you hear a crack in the middle of the night, a whisper, in the middle of the night and you experience fear, the things that have brought me to be more calm in those type of situations or not even experience them in a, 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 as a whole is that I don't anticipate sentience from the darkness. I don't uh, wish it to be there. But if it came, I believe I would be able to experience it. But that I understand now that if I go in with that mindset, I have primed myself to see that even if it's not there. And then that's not a weakness. That's not uh, my ears not working. That's not me being stupid. That's acknowledging how my perceptions actually work. And that, because I realize that if, I, if I'm watching one of these lip sync type of uh, funny videos that I'm experiencing hearing somebody say something they didn't say, that my experiences overall are generated and that are managed through my perceptions of and experiences and what I believe just as much as what's actually happening outside. And that really my comfort with that is more about my interpretation and reality. So if I can be okay with 80% knowing, understand that that motorcycle that just fucked up my shot is not, uh, it's not uh, that I know 100% certainty what it is and all the things that are there. It's just whatever that sound was, if it was a guy going along on a speaker playing that sound, I can't determine that. I play a lion roaring is that behind me or is it from a speaker? I'm not built to interpret 100% reality as is. I'm, inter I'm built to be able to take that signal and match it up to my expectations. Sounds like a lion because I've heard lines before. I've been taught what a lion sounds like. It turns out that it's AI because I can't tell the difference between the frequencies because I'm not built to understand reality as is, I'm built to interpret and understand what I believe reality to be. And that that's every perception. Audio is no different. And that there's other aspects, there's much more in depth, we could get into the technicals, but that's not for this particular conversation. This is just about getting comfortable with the idea that what you experience and you hear comes from sound waves going in through your ear, being converted to signals. And that those signals are interpreted into our experience. They're not direct reflections of something that's really universally true. And that sounds weird. And that sounds weird because you believe something else. That sounds weird because that conflicts with how you feel comfortable with this world. And that's okay. And that we're going to continue to explore. And that whether you like it or not, reality is going to reality. And that for me... These understandings have formatively given me a chance to live my life more fully, more freely, because I'm not trying to match up an internal model or a belief of what the universe is 
and taking in what the universe actually is and suffering that mismatch. I believe that's part of how this all works. Because you hearing me right now is self-generated.